King elsewhere talks about the fierce urgency of now. So in his narration, he is now coming to this hollowed spot. Hollowed is also an echo of? Yes, hollowed ground, which is? Gettysburg Address, yes. What is hollowed ground? What is a hollowed spot? Yes, made sacred, made holy in some way. And this is not a call to a particular religious faith. This is a call to a secular sense of faith in what the country stands for, to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. Now is the time to make real. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time our nation should come from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. This sweltering summer of the Negro's legitimate discontent will not pass until there is invigorating autumn of freedom and equality. Does anyone recognize an echo in sweltering summer of the Negro's legitimate discontent? This is a Jeopardy question, a daily double Jeopardy question. Lots of points. Anna? Richard the III. Richard III. Now is the summer, now is the winter of our discontent made glorious summer by this son of York. This is an allusion to Shakespeare that is very quietly made. You're not supposed to notice it particularly, but there it is. He had to have read Shakespeare to know this, to put this way. So, 1963 is not an end, but a beginning. Here we are back in the narration. There is one thing that I must say to my people. Now the address shifts. It's not we anymore. Who is my people? Yeah, I think it's African-American individuals. I think that's true, although one could also say it's anyone who supports the cause, but I think that's correct. He's really making an address to those people who have come, and he says, we must not allow our creative protest to degenerate into physical violence. Now, we saw this in Douglas. We saw this in Du Bois. This was a big theme, of course, for Booker T. Washington. But almost every one of these leaders have said this. Were there some black leaders at this time who were calling for a different form of action other than nonviolent direct action? Yes, there were. There were. So King says, we must meet physical force with soul force. Had physical force been used against demonstrators for civil rights? Sure it had been. Just physical force of the dogs let loose on demonstrators, the high pressure fire hoses that broke people's bones uh, when they were turned on them, uh, the really vicious kind of violence that Bull Connor and others used to suppress, let, let alone some of the more private violence that was not at the hands of the authorities, but at the hands of individuals. The marvelous new militancy which has engulfed the Negro community must not lead us to a distrust of all white people, and so on. Then farther down, and he says, you have been the veterans of creative suffering. This is a very special call. The phrase creative suffering is a leap it's an invention. It's not something we would use in a common idiom. To think of suffering as being creative. To say that unearned suffering is redemptive. This is a dramatic and unusual thing. If you've been suffering, really suffering, deprivation, physical pain, disappointment, discrimination, and someone tells you, that that, which is not merited, is redemptive. What does that mean? That's asking a lot, isn't it? So he says, continue to work with the faith that unearned suffering is redemptive. Go back to Mississippi, go back to Alabama. Now you see all these repetitions. Would you use repetitions like this in something you were simply going to write and submit to a newspaper? No, you probably wouldn't. So are there differences between what you speak in an address to a group of people and what you write purely for the consumption of reading? Yes, there are differences. Now, we hold these truths to be self-evident and then into the very famous part of the speech, which um, is wonderful. It's very inspirational. 
Um, and its repetition is in part because of its hopefulness. A lot of the speech is uh, focused on certain elements of repetition that we've seen. And I have a dream one day today. I have a dream today is one of those elements. This is our hope and with this faith. So these words echo all throughout the address. The word faith, word hope, the word dream. So let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Now, if you watch this on film, you'll see that by this time, King has sort of departed from the written text. And he is speaking in a more extemporaneous manner. This is an appeal which he ends with a wonderful kind of peroration which calls upon music, just as Douglas called upon music and poetry at the end of his address. What is the point of invoking poetry or song here in a peroration? Why would you do that? It's memorable, yes, it sticks in your mind more. And Lucy? Um, it also just creates like a feeling of unity among yes. the crowd. Yes, it's a feeling of unity and it's feeling. It's both, music has an emotive power to it. I mean, any decent music does have an emotive power to it. So it gives you feeling and it gives you solidarity. It gives you unity, particularly if everyone knows the, the music, if everyone knows the words. So I just wanted to say one other thing about King before we turn to LBJ's speech. Like many um, wonderful leaders, there is in King a prophetic streak. And he is very well aware of this, very conscious of it. Uh, at Memphis, during the sanitation workers' strike in 1968, one of the last things that King says are, I've been to the mountaintop, I, meaning himself. There's no we here. He's allowed me to go to the mountaintop. And I've looked over and seen the promised land. I may not get there, but we, as a people, will get to the promised land. And then I'm not worried. A remarkable sentence. I'm not fearing any man. He's shot very shortly after this. He's assassinated very shortly after this. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He hath trampled out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. All know that as a line from Battle, Battle Hymn of the Republic. Yes, Battle Hymn of the Republic. Well, what is this image of? What figure is he acting as a memory or echo of? Moses, yes, it's the figure of Moses. It's the figure of Moses who did not get to the promised land. Well, there's a kind of prophetic figure to that. There is going to be someone who gets you there, but who doesn't him or herself get there, which indicates the temporal aspect of this struggle. It's not over, and King knows it's not over.